Hey everyone, welcome to our online service this week. As most of you know, I'm Andy, and I get the privilege of overseeing our online campus. We would really love it if you would let us know that you're here and where you're joining us from. So please go ahead and say hey in the chat if you're watching this live. Our hosts would love to greet you. Today, we're starting a brand new series for the month of June that we are calling Check Yourself. I believe that this is gonna be a really helpful series and is gonna give us the opportunity to ask ourselves some challenging questions and that exploring the answers to those will help move us forward in our faith journey. Something else that I wanted to mention, especially for our online crowd, is that a little later in the service, you'll be hearing about something called GLS. The Global Leadership Summit is a two-day event designed to give you so much practical teaching on how you can better lead right where you are, in your home, your school, your job. No matter what stage of life you're in, you're a leader because leadership is influence and everyone has influence. If you'd like to learn more about how you can best leverage that from a Christian perspective, I'd encourage you to check out GLS. Bridgepoint is a host site, and so we'll be gathering people at our Tyrone campus for the event. But we're also able to offer the conference online for you guys so that you can access it wherever you are. Here's the important thing though. If you're signing up to attend online, you'll need to use a different link than if you're signing up for the in-person event. So make sure you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page on our website to make sure you get the correct information. Okay, so we're about to get started. I'm gonna jump on over into the live chat. I hope to connect with you there shortly. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. God bless everyone. Good morning, everyone. Would you stand with us this morning? Yes, we're so excited to worship with you. Come on. When the fight I'm slowly drifting A vagabond And just when I ran out of road I met a man I didn't know And he told me that I was not alone Come on He picked me up Turned me around Placed my Because he healed my 
got some energy in the room. Bridgepoint Church, how we feeling this morning? We good? Man, it feels good. Hey, listen, I want to welcome in those of you joining us online. We're glad that you've decided to worship with us here today. Guys, it is June, all right? I don't know if you saw the calendar, but it's halfway through the year, all right? Ready or not, here it comes. But hey, listen, we wanted to let you know about our mission, which is helping people, all people get closer to God. And if you've been a part of Bridge Point for a while, you know that mission. And if you're new and just entering in, that is what drives us. That is what guides us to do what we do. And a part of accomplishing that is offering different opportunities for you to get to know more about that mission and how it's accomplished. And so how we do that is through a class called Starting Point. So we wanna invite you out to that. If you have not taken Starting Point yet, next Sunday after the second service in our West Auditorium, come join us. It's gonna be a great way to learn more about our church, how you can step into the life of the church. You'll get to know some of our staff even better, but as well, uh, you'll get to know some people from here that you see on Sundays in a better and a fresh way. Build friendships, build relationships. And so seeing that we we are here in community, and this is a central focus, a part of what we do. Why don't we take some time, turn to the people around us, and say good morning and welcome them in. So listen, as I mentioned, it is June. We are six months into the year already, and it is flying by. But if I'm honest, I say that at the end of the year as well. And when Christmas rolls around, I'm like, man, the year really flew by. And then once January rolls in, it's like, man, what happened? And then I get to the summer and I say the same thing over and over and over again. And it's an interesting thing because I thought about it this morning and I was challenged uh, by the Lord to really be reflective. And am I just saying that to kind of give myself an excuse to say, you know what? The year flew by really quickly. I guess I can, you know, just coast on through, continue continue on through the summer, but I was challenged to really reflect, man, how many moments in my life have I deferred to that feeling of, man, the year just really flew by and I've missed out on being present in the moments that God wants me to be present in. And I think of even times like this, of times of worship Sunday experiences where if we're honest, we can coast through this. We can just allow it to fly by very quickly and get to next Sunday and the next Sunday and the next. But what if we were challenged in this moment to be ever so present, to be ever in the moment right here, right now, not ignoring the realities that we have going around us in life, but actually bringing those realities into this space and saying, God, I can't handle it, but you can. So friends, let me encourage you this morning. If you don't have life figured out, if you're imperfect, you are welcome in this space. And that is the best news to receive this morning. So church, that is what we've come to do is we've come to worship a perfect God who does have things figured out, who is good and who invites us imperfect people into relationship with him to experience him. So friends, we're glad that you're here. Would you join us and continue in this time of worship together? Hallelujah. 
this morning. Sing a little louder. 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 Sing a little Just 
give of ourselves and we put our prayers before you father you are the sustainer of all living things jesus you are in control of everything lord and we trust you jesus and lord forgive us when we worry and when we fear help us to rely on you father you are so gracious and so loving and we thank you and we praise you it is in your wonderful name we pray Amen. You may be seated. Okay, I don't usually use the platform as an opportunity for a personal point of preference and for a therapy session, but I'm going to today because we're entering to, into that summer season where there's gonna be road trips occurring and some of y'all need some help on the road, all right? You probably already know who you are and as you get into this, I recognize that I'm running the risk of making some of you really upset with the truth of reality, but my job as a pastor is never to just be your friend and even say hard things in love and so I intend to do that today. I need to talk to you about merging in a vehicle. I wanna to talk to you about merging because as you're traveling along, generally speaking, you see signs miles ahead of the merger that says, we're gonna go down from two lanes into one. And some of you feel like it's like a joke, like, nah, I'm sure they won't, all right? You come up on giant orange flashing signs going to one lane. There's big orange cones that funnel you into one lane. Or we, we live here in the Bay Area, okay? If you've driven to the Tampa airport, guys, off of 275, it goes to one lane every time. It just does, all right? It's not a surprise anymore. You've lived here long enough to know this, but some of you will still ride that merger all the way until you get to the cones or the part where there's no more road. And here's the only part that bothers me. I'm a big, it's the kindness of the Lord that leads us to repentance. I'm also really big in the reality that, it, that, that God is a just God. And I, when it comes to driving, I lean much more towards his justice on you to help you understand, I don't owe you the spot in front of me just because you didn't merge any sooner than you did. I just don't, okay? Now, please don't email me. They're clapping, all right? Those of you that aren't clapping, you're the problem, all right? 
Don't email me the zipper effect about how that's supposed to work best to do it that way. When you see signs to get over, get over, okay? Now, welcome to Bridge Point. Really glad that you're here this morning. And I think this is a little bit pertinent because we were starting a brand new series today called Check Yourself. Check Yourself. That The summer season offers us a little more opportunity to do maybe a little more introspection than a normal calendar year. And here's why I say that. This year we've been talking about in our series the direction of what it's been looking like to get closer to God for us as a church family. We started with our church values at the beginning of the year. We did a series on kind of a character study on the book, the biblical book of Jonah, uh, that Jonah had a wrong perspective of God's objective and how often we do as well. We talked for a couple weeks about who's setting the pace in our faith journey, and then Easter reminded us that because Jesus was forsaken, you and I might live lives of fulfillment, of purpose. And we actually spent the last six weeks in a series called Know God's Will, that God has a will for each and every one of us, and we can know it. And so now, it seems an appropriate time for us to spend some time maybe being a little more introspective than we naturally would. And here's why I say that, and here's why my merger and the lack of paying attention to the signs comes into effect because some of us probably need to be heeding some warning signs that exist in our faith journey. They exist in some of our relationships and they even exist in some of our finances. But if we don't pay attention to them, then you end up getting mad at me that I won't let you merge over or you end up getting mad at God or other people because you didn't heed some of the signs in your faith journey. I want to talk about that. Check yourself before you what? Wreck yourself. You're ready for this series. You know you needed it just as much as I do. So let me jump straight into the series today by asking this big question. And maybe it's gonna look a little bit differently than it for you than it does for me, but I think it's a pertinent question for all of us to be asking as we head into a season where we might could do a little more introspection into ourselves. Are there any warning signs that you need to pay attention to in your faith journey? Are there any warning signs that you need to pay attention to in your faith journey? Because if you ignore those, they will have an effect on your faith journey. They will have an effect on your opportunity, your encounters, your circumstances, the moments that you have to invest yourself in getting closer to God. That's what we're here for at Bridgepoint. We wanna help people, all people to get closer to God, but we can't get you there. We can only help you get there. So are there warning signs in your faith journey that you've not been paying attention to? And maybe over the course of this series, we can all take a, a, an in-depth look inside at how our faith is doing and, and what our faith should be telling us to be able to check ourselves, course correct a little bit before we wreck ourselves and then end up doing damage to ourselves, to our relationship with God or to our relationships with others. I'm gonna jump straight into it today. We're gonna to spend a little bit of time in one of the Bible's wisdom books called Proverbs. Pro Proverbs was written by the wisest person who ever lived. It was a guy named Solomon. Solomon actually prayed to God, God, would you grant me wisdom? And God was so impressed by his prayer that he did. And so Solomon wrote a lot of his wisdom down in several different uh, facets. But in the book of Proverbs, it's almost like, uh, it's less like a literary flow and more of these one-off one-liners that, that are just instructing on wisdom. He writes it as if he's writing it to his collective sons, but it's really just wisdom for, for people like us, people trying to understand more of who God is and how to follow him. And so we're gonna, we're gonna look at some of his wisdom recorded in Proverbs chapter four. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me there, or your Bible app or whatever, I'll put it on the screen. But I don't want you to miss what Solomon has to say and how his wisdom of thousands of years ago might be especially pertinent for you and I in the opportunity afforded to us to check ourselves, to check our faith journeys, because I'm wondering if there's some signs that we're not paying attention to. Here's how Solomon put it. Chapter four, starting in verse 20, he wrote this. My son, in other words, everybody, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your hearts. In other words, hey, this is important, all right? Focus, tune in, don't sleep on this moment because these words, this wisdom, they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. I wonder how many of us are on a faith journey right now that it feels incomplete, it feels like something's missing, it feels like more often than not there's more questions than answers. None of those are wrong, 
All of those are signs that point to something. And I wonder if these words in and of themselves might be exactly what some of us are searching for. Solomon says, hey, everybody in, listen to this. Do not miss this. And then he gives us what we know as chapter four, verse 23. Solomon said it this way. Above all else, that's a priority statement right there. Above all else, guard your heart because everything you do flows from it. Above all else, like priority of priorities here. And maybe this is exactly, again, like, like I said, what some of you needed to hear, because maybe if I asked it another way in the form of a question, it prompts some interesting thoughts or maybe even prompts some interesting concerns. Are you guarding your heart? Are you guarding your heart? Now, for a little perspective, when you see Solomon in the book of Proverbs writing the word heart, this would be right from my commentary, but I think it applies to us. Heart, written in the book of Proverbs, regularly refers to the center of one's inner life and orientation to God, from which a person does all thinking, all feeling, and all choosing. So he's not talking about a physical heart. Your rib cage is doing the job of guarding that one, right? He's asking like the deep inside, the core of who you are, the center of your existence, the thing that forms your identity, the thing that competes in its affections and attentions, in its desires and its directions. Deep inside of that that space, your heart, it's that space inside of you that I wonder how many people really know or know all of. It's that space inside of you that from it flows everything. From it flows your actions. From it flows your decisions. Jesus says that out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. The New Testament's really clear that when we see actions coming out of us that we don't like, actions that don't honor God, actions that hurt other people, it's not that we have a doing problem. The Bible points to it, it would be a heart problem. Because it's that heart, it's the inner core of us that gets most stained and most affected, most broken by sin. And so just to level the playing field, sin is an all of us problem. It's a human being problem. It's a reality that you and I as human beings more naturally bend towards sin and self than we do the things and the ways of God. It points to a heart problem. And Solomon is saying above everything else, like priority number one, the most important thing you can be thinking about, the most important thing you could be doing, the most important thing that needs to occupy your time in terms of concern for living out your faith is guarding your heart. Do you? Am I? Maybe some of you are saying, I I don't even understand exactly what that means. Like how, how do you guard your heart? What do you do? Like what's that process? Or maybe more importantly, you're not even sold that this is the priority because why does it matter? And I wanna put it in context of today to go ahead and give you the big idea for where I wanna go in this talk because I think it sort of sets up these next couple of weeks in this series called Check Yourself. It sets up these next couple of weeks in terms of kind of looking deep within to see what the signs of our faith journey are really communicating. I wonder if the writer of Proverbs gave us this statement because he knew something about the natural human condition that's true for each and every one of us. And I wanna give you this big idea because it points to that truth. We will not naturally drift closer to God. We will not naturally drift closer to God. In other words, you're not gonna wake up one day and think, wow, my relationship with God has gotten so close and I don't even know how that happened. Because we will not naturally drift that direction. Closeness to God, seeking out to understand him and to know him more deeply, it takes action on our part. And I wonder if that's part of why many of us in our faith journey feel like something's lacking or missing is because we're simply not putting in the effort that it takes to be near God. He's not aiming to be distant. He's not aiming to be confusing. He's not aiming to be far off or uncertain. That's why he sent his very son, Jesus, to live the life we never could, to die the death that we deserved. He wanted to be, that's why we call Jesus Emmanuel, God with us. But we don't naturally get there. In fact, where our hearts more naturally bend is to rebel against anyone that wants to have influence over us. 
It's more naturally inclined to be concerned with me, myself, and I. Am I comfortable? Am I stable? Do I feel safe? Does this feel easy? Does this feel like what I want? Is this making me happy? Is it good in my opinion? We're not naturally bending towards the things of God when we want to naturally more often bend towards the things of self. I wonder how many of the issues we encounter on a regular basis that simply flow from hearts that are not guarded, hearts that are left to just follow your heart. What a dangerous position that can put us in to just follow the whims of our emotion. Guard your heart because we won't naturally drift towards nearness with God. In fact, we'll naturally drift away from it. So when it comes to your faith journey, let me give you a couple things to think about because maybe this continues to help spell out what it looks like or, or point towards whether your heart and mine are really guarded. In fact, I'd, I'd kind of put it this way. Let me give you some warning signs that might be up in your faith journey that maybe it's, it's indicators that it's time to pay a little more attention to whether or not our heart is as guarded as it ought to be. The first is this, extended dry seasons that in your faith journey, there's gonna be dry seasons where you just feel like, man, I, did, I don't feel like I got as much out of that or I feel like I haven't heard from, not audibly, but just experienced God lately, that, that something's been missing. Now, dry seasons are part of the faith journey. They're gonna come because dry seasons are opportunities for obedience, that we keep pressing through, doing the things that we know God has called us to do, even when it doesn't feel right or we don't feel his nearness. We know that he is, we struggle to feel it, but I'm talking about an extended dry season. An extended dry season that makes it easier to say, ah, oh, well, it's not gonna be that big a deal if I don't go to church this Sunday. Going to church isn't the point, but what does it say about you when you don't want to go in the space where God can often be found? Right, what, what does it say about you when it says, well, you know, I haven't read my Bible by myself in a little while, but, it, but you know, sometimes I just struggle to understand it. I don't know if I'm getting anything out of it. I'm not sure if I'm like doing it right. And what we end up doing are these tiny series of decisions that don't help us get closer to God, but actually help us drift away from them. Extended dry seasons should be a concerning sign to us to ask ourselves if we're doing all that we need to do to be spiritually healthy. The next one is this. What about lack of expectation? Another way to put that is boredom. Uh, let me ask it this way. How many of you, I'll put it this way. When's the last time you showed up to a church service expecting to have an encounter with the living, active God of the universe? That when's the last time that you thought, man, I've got to get in his presence to bring my anxiety, to bring my stressors, to bring my sorrows, to bring my hurts, to bring my confusions, to bring my doubts. I, I've got to find a space to get with him because I know I can expect that if I will seek him, he'll be near to me. That when I show up with a broken heart, he promises to be there. That when I'm hurting, he can bring peace into the unpeaceful parts of my life. But but quite honestly, how often do we find ourselves where our faith just feels boring? That we sit through another worship song and we sing the words, but it doesn't, it doesn't stir us that we're in the presence of God. We sit through another message and just think, ah, oh, maybe that one just wasn't for me again. And I wonder if it's just we're getting bored in our faith simply because we're not expecting the living God of the universe to be active in our lives too. That should be a warning sign. It should point to something for us. Well, what about this one? Complacency. Complacent. Are you getting complacent in your faith? You're just kind of going through the motions that you've stopped looking for ways to serve and be involved. You've stopped looking for opportunities to gather in a group or a small group. You've start look, stopped looking for ways to invest yourself into the mission and the work, the move of God you think, well, somebody else will help that hurting person. Somebody else can share their faith. Somebody else, somebody else will let those people that haven't merged in time over eventually somewhere, somehow. Somebody, somebody else will do it. And again, if I, if I miss one week, one week's not that bad. And I know this is gonna be two weeks in a row, but two weeks isn't a big deal. I'll start next week that we just get so complacent. You probably don't wake up in a space saying, well, I wanna make my faith really boring but we take little decisions that cause us to begin to drift. 
How about this one? This one might be true for some of you. And it's one that we need to be a tune of because it's another one that we don't wake up and just suddenly find ourselves here. It's generally a slow spiral away, a slow drift. And that's isolation. Are you on the journey of getting closer to God with anyone? You're like, well, Tyler, I'm sitting in a room full of people. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, are you isolated? Tyler, the kids are home from school all day long right now. I'm not isolated. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, do you have people that want to walk with you to see you get closer to God and you see them? Do you have people that when the anxiety wakes you up in the middle of the night, you can text and say, I need prayers for peace? Do you have people when the financial stress feels overwhelming that you can reach out and say, pray for me? This just feels like too much. The relationship is hurting. The situation seems dire. This feels impossible. I'm not sure what my next move is. I'm not sure where to turn. I'm talking about in those moments, do you have people that you say, hey, you're on this journey with me. You care about me and I care about you. I need help. I need somebody walking with me, being near to me, not proximately, but near to me in a journey of faith. Because what ends up happening is we settle for gathering in a crowd on Sundays to walk in and walk right back out of it. And then want to pretend that we have a family, a church family that's invested in our lives and that we're invested in as well. Gathering on Sundays isn't what Christian community is ever intended to be. In fact, it's just a springboard towards the depth that God has for us in the family of God. Are you, you find yourself in isolation? Last but not least, are you finding yourself disengaged when it comes to your faith? Are you jumping in? Are you looking for ways to serve? Are you looking for innovative ideas to be invested? Are you looking for those opportunities that says, man, what God is doing in my life, I can't keep it to myself. I've got to let somebody know. But instead you kind of find yourself in a season of, oh, well, ho-hum, same stuff, different day, different way. These should be signs that when we begin to see them, and everybody's gonna walk through moments where this is part of it. I don't want you panicking. I want you paying attention. Are there any warning signs in your journey that it's time to begin to pay attention to? And is it time to begin to check yourself? Because here's what the writer of Proverbs, Solomon, in all of his wisdom said, if you're, if you, here's why it's important to guard your heart and what it looks like to begin to step into it. Back to Proverbs chapter four, he put it this way. He said, keep your mouth free from, of perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. I'll say that one again, just because it hurts me that bad. And I want it to hurt you the same. Keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. I don't know many people that hang out with folks that talk that way and talk down and negatively and concerningly and are always just spewing opinion and negativity. And they walk away from those encounters saying, whoo, I am refreshed and closer to God. <laughs> but we settle for it on social media in our friend groups, around the office, around the folks that we naturally hang out with. And I wonder if that's a reflection that maybe what we're allowing into our heart should concern us because if you put garbage in, you know what comes out? Garbage. The writer of Proverbs continues and he says, "Here's I think this is huge. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. The writer of Proverbs is saying, guard your heart. And one of the most important things you can do is stay locked in on the plans and purposes that God has for you. Because I think what ends up happening for far too many of us is we end up trying to live our life through the rear view mirror. And yes, it's true that life is best understood through the rear view mirror, but you can't drive forward if you're constantly looking back. And I wonder if that's a big issue in some of the faith journeys of many of us is we say, I would love to guard my heart. I would love to experience the grace of God so fully and so completely. But man, what happened to me, the way I've been living, the things that I've done, the things that I've said, the places I've been, what I've experienced, there's no way God would have a future, a plan, a purpose. There's no way God would look on me with love. There's no way God could love somebody like me. 
And we end up saying, it sounds really good. I would love to guard my heart. I would love to heed the warning signs all around me. And instead of fixing our eyes forward and where God is leading us and the plans and purposes we have, we look back and say, I'm so broken. I can't believe I've done this again. I can't believe I'm still stuck. I'm still here. I'm still not finding freedom. Meanwhile, just trying to live our lives in reverse. I wonder if that's where some of the faith journeys of folks represented as a part of Bridgepoint often find themselves. Is that we hear a sermon series the past six weeks of how to know God's will. And instead of fixing our eyes on God and his will, his plans and purposes for us, we end up fixing our eyes on all the things that disqualify us from being called a son or daughter of God. Let me level the playing field one more time. Everyone has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. What's common to you in this room is not how perfect you think you are or not. Nobody is. What's common is that we've all been a part of the brokenness, the stain, the, the, the defect of sin that wreaks havoc in our souls. And we've instead encountered the goodness of God that has begun a transformative work in our hearts and is freeing us to walk into a purpose that only he could provide but you won't get into that purpose if you're focused on what got you to this moment. Fix your eyes on what's ahead, strain for it, look at it, stay focused. And he even goes so far as to say, do not turn to the right or the left, keep your foot from evil. In other words, there's going to be distractions along the way because we live in a broken world. We live in a world that often hurts. We live in a world that's often confusing and chaotic and uncertain. But if you and I would commit ourselves to straining towards fixing our gaze on what's in front of us, the reality that God still holds the whole world in his hands and my past no longer defines you and those chains don't have to hold me back unless I assign them power to do so. But instead, I'm gonna move forward and I'm gonna tune out the things to the left and the right so that as I see signs in my my life, I'm going to check myself because becoming who God made me to be is so far more important than settling for what this culture assigns me to try to be. But are we doing that? Are we doing that? I think of this, this proverb lines up a lot with the way the apostle Paul in the New Testament also encouraged one of his churches. He was writing a letter to a young church uh, in a city called Ephesus. His letter we have now called the, the book of Ephesians in the New Testament of your Bible. Paul in chapter four writing to that church, he kind of put it this way, fix your eyes on Jesus. You won't naturally drift towards God. Maybe, maybe his explanation helps add a perspective for you. Ephesians chapter four, verse one, Paul said, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, he was in jail at the time. He said, I urge you to, look at this, walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. Paul said, your aim, your goal is to walk worthy of your calling. Two things really quick. What is your calling? Well, number one, you should go back and watch the series we just finished, but let me make it incredibly simple for each and every one of you. You are called to respond to the grace of God, to either believe that it applies for you and to step into sonship or being a daughter of the king of the universe or not. And Paul is simply saying, walk in a manner that affirms your identity, that when you are a daughter of the king, when you are a son of the king, it changes what is priority for you and I because our priority becomes the king himself. Walk in a manner that's worthy of it. Now, again, my commentary says for that word worthy, it's not worthy as in I'm walking in a manner that makes me worthy of God's grace. None of us can earn that. Our sin has disqualified us from ever being able to stand at the pearly gates of heaven on our own accord. We desperate for the grace of God to do the work in us that we could not do for ourselves. Instead, what my commentary said, it's worthy is in the sense of like balancing the scales. It says, the believer who walks in a manner worthy of the calling with which he's been called is one whose daily living corresponds to his blessed position as a child of God and fellow heir with Jesus Christ. Are you walking in a manner that points to we're living for something more than this world could define in us? 
You have a privileged position that by faith in the grace of God, through his love and the sacrifice he made on the cross 2,000 years ago to die in the place of sinners like me and sinners like you, he died the death that should have been mine and should have been yours. They buried him because my sin, the weight of my sin, the burden of my sin and yours killed him. It crushed him. And three days later, he defeated the power of sin and death forever and rose from the grave that affords you and I a new purpose, that we no longer walk identified by our past, chained to our, ba- our past, labeled by our past, but instead we walk as sons and daughters of Almighty God and we're gonna walk in a manner that says, I'm not who I used to be and I'm not who I wanna be, but thank God I'm growing into who he has made me to be. Sons and daughters of the King, are you? Maybe I start the question over the beginning of this message by saying, are you walking worthy of the calling that God has placed on your life? Are you walking worthy as a parent, as a friend, as a son or a daughter? Are you walking worthy as an employee, as a student that's out out for the summer? Are you walking worthy as as a boss, as an extended family member? Are you walking worthy as a member of the community? Are you walking worthy on your teammate, as a teammate? And here's why this is concerning. If we don't walk worthy, if we don't guard our hearts, we don't naturally drift towards God. Paul puts it this way. Let me begin to wrap up with this. He said, I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, I urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who is over all and through all and in all. Fix your eyes on one priority because there's one God who has one calling on your life to be a son or daughter, to fight for hope, to do it with uh, patience and humility, to keep moving forward. And for everyone in the room that says, that sounds so good, but my story, my story, my story. Paul, the very next thing he said is, but grace was given to each one of us. Grace was given to each one of us. Grace was given to you and praise God, there's grace available to me. Grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift that Jesus literally came to be a gift for you and I where our sin bent us towards rebelling against him and doing things our own way. But there was grace for us that we might continue to embrace our sonship or being a daughter of the king. And every time we miss it, we can get back up. Every time we turn back, we can look back forward. Every time we stumble, every time we doubt, every time it feels overwhelming or like too much, there's grace for us. And the only thing God is asking us to do is pay attention to the warning signs and allow his grace to call us back to fixing our gaze on the plans and purpose that the living God of the universe has for you. You are not too far gone. You are not too broken. You're not too messed up, beat up, cast aside, or broke down. You are a son or daughter of the king, and it's time for you and I to embrace that and begin to walk worthy of the calling that God's placed on our lives because we will not naturally drift closer to him. But the place that our hearts most come alive is in pursuit of getting close to him. So I hope today in this series is the beginning of a few moments that allow us to check ourselves. And here's why this is critically important. Heading into a summer season, uh, here's some things that you need to be aware of. On Wednesday nights, we're doing what's called summer nights. That's not just a holy huddle and a feel good powwow. That's an opportunity to step out of isolation and out of complacency and take a step towards connectedness, connectedness and knowing God. Maybe the next step is starting point that's coming up on June 11th on every campus. 
It's taking a step of saying, I don't want to settle. I don't want to keep looking backwards. I need, to, I need to heed the warnings and take some steps forward. And maybe it's baptisms. We've got a big day coming up in the month of July that it's time to start making plans for. I don't know what your next step is, but my hope is that this begins a season of allowing us to look inside and say, God, am I walking worthy of the call that you've placed on my life? Or are there some warning signs that it's time for me to begin to pay attention to? Let's commit over the course of this series to check ourselves before we wreck ourselves and do damage in our relationship with God, damage to those we love, or damage to us in the pursuit of getting closer to him. Would you pray with me? God, I'm gonna trust that your spirit is at work and on the move with everyone that's encountering this message. Because God, the reality is, is that each and every one of us have some things in our heart that it's time for us to pay some attention to and better line up with who you are calling us to be. God, may this be the beginning of our attempts to check ourselves to be more in tune with your spirit, to be taking the steps to put into action things that are gonna help us get closer to you and walk worthy of the calling that you've given to us. God, would you give us such a sense of courage to not settle and not miss your work in our hearts and our lives, but instead to continue to step in what it means to embrace an identity as a daughter or son of God. Thank you, Jesus, that your sacrifice makes it possible. May your spirit be the one that helps us to check and correct and walk worthy in your sight. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Amen. So friends, to Tyler's question and to that point of, man, what are those warning signs that we are sensing, that we're feeling, that we've just kind of pushed to the side? I think ironically, um, there's physical warning signs whenever we're sick, right? We maybe get a fever, maybe we don't feel too well, maybe we're fatigued, whatever it is. And interestingly, whenever we start to sense those warning signs, there's a reaction. We try to find something to remedy that. We go to the doctor for medication potentially, and they give us a list and they say, hey, hydrate, make sure you're getting fluids, make sure you take the medication at this time, at this hour at this day and we're quick to care for that but I can't help but think how often those spiritual warning signs that Tyler mentioned that we're quick to ignore and just to assume well that's just how I am that's just how I was raised you don't understand I've always been angry or you don't understand I've always been short-tempered you don't understand my the way that I was raised has made me in this way and that's how I will be forever but what if there's something deeper within our souls that is not satisfied, that is causing us to react and act a certain way that is not in line with what God would want for us. I can tell you something, nothing good comes from a very emotionally charged reaction in my life. Nothing good has ever come from that when I'm angry and then I respond out of that anger. And I can either assume that, man, well, that's just how I am and that's just how it can be. Or what if there's something that God wants to lead us towards and what if he wants to actually grow us and challenge us in a specific way that we're healed and we're restored, not perfect, but we're walking in purpose. To me, this message is like a doctor's appointment. For our spiritual lives and for our our spiritual health, this was a doctor's appointment for me of saying, hey, Gabe, pay attention because if you're not careful, you're gonna crash. So friends, this, what we get to do every single Sunday, there's these moments here and now where we choose to respond. We have a a moment to respond and the reality is that we walk in and out of these services and in and out of life, not responding to the things that we know are not healthy for our lives. But what if, what if today we chose and you chose to say, you know what? I feel that nudge in my heart. I feel a little bit of that emotion coming up, just feeling a little bit of overwhelmed. And I want to respond to that. I want to allow God to take care of that for me. 
Did you know that your heavenly father cares for your life so deeply that he chose you and he wants you well? So whatever you've heard up until this point in your life, that you've been defined by your past, that you've been defined by your circumstances, would you allow the spirit of God to minister into your heart in this time of worship? And would we respond to that nudging? And even if we don't feel that, would we still respond anyways, trusting that God is faithful and that he's good? So friends, however you choose to respond today, would it be a step in some direction of saying, you know what? I'm gonna pray intentionally during this time. You know, throughout the week, I'm going to really evaluate the things that I need to peel away from my life so that I can be healthy. Or maybe it looks like today, stepping into prayer and care and allowing somebody to pray over your life and lead you towards that next. Maybe it's stopping by the info counter and actually communicating, hey, here's kind of what's burdening my heart and how can I step in to the life of this church and not do life by myself? Whatever it is, maybe it's worship. Whatever it is, would we be led towards a response here today? So friends, how we respond matters. And it ultimately will lead us towards a healthier life or we'll start seeing that road get smaller and smaller before we crash. So friends, would you join me in this time of response and worship? Would you stand to your feet?
Amen. If you guys would have a seat just for a few more moments, I want to tell you about a few of the things that uh, Tyler's mentioned briefly, but also some things that are a really practical next step for you. So if you're saying, Gabe, I, I feel that nudge. I want to respond. How do I respond to what uh, God is doing within my heart? Uh, here's some really practical next steps for you. We have summer nights starting this week, this Wednesday here at the Tyrone campus, and we're excited about it. And so if you have questions about it, if you're wondering like what is exactly going to happen, uh, we're going to have a time of fellowship together. We're going to eat together, and then we're going to watch some video content together, and then we're going to be in community, break out in groups, and have conversations and grow together. And so families, if you have kids, we'll have Kids Point available during those Wednesday nights. So uh, wherever you find yourself, summer nights is gonna be a great opportunity for the next five to six weeks to really jump into something over the summer. As well, uh, you probably saw it on the way in potentially, but there's some suitcases rolling on, on in. We are not an airport, but we are sending our students to camp this week. So there's some excitement there because camp is life-changing. And so if you've been a part of BP Youth Camp or some sort of youth camp in your journey when you were a kid, you know how exciting this is and how formative and impactful it is for not just the kid, but the families and the generations to come. And so a part of that, uh, we wanted to really come alongside those students and those leaders by praying for them. And so um, on the info counter on your way out, grab one of those youth cards. It has the list of names of every single student and leader that is going on the trip this week. And so our ask to you is, hey, throughout your week this week, would you commit to praying for them when you think of them, when you see that card? And so grab one of those on your way out and pray for each individual student by name, just lifting them up to God and praying for peace of mind. Uh, if you've been to youth, you know how chaotic it can be and stressful at times, um, but we're praying for a very impactful and peaceful trip for these students and leaders and safe travels as well. So grab that on your way out. And as well, we have something we're excited about. Uh, we are going to be another again for a few years now, but uh, another host site, Satellite Campus for GLS happening, Global Leadership Summit. And so um, if you know about GLS, you know how awesome it is. If you don't know about GLS, check out this quick promo video to get you excited on that. What could you do with two days? When it comes to how you spend your time, you want to be intentional, impactful, inspiring. You want your investment to be worth it. The Global Leadership Summit is two days to unplug from the everyday, to refuel, refocus, and gain practical skills to level up your leadership. The Global Leadership Summit gathers in locations across the world. This is a community of people dedicated to investing in themselves. Curious, growth-minded leaders sharing inspiring moments that have a transformative impact on your heart and mind. The Global Leadership Summit is two days of renowned speakers, uniquely curated thought leaders from every industry. Gain tools that challenge you to amplify your influence and equips you to lead where you are. This investment in your leadership now will create exponential dividends in your future. So what could you do with two days? Did you get it? <laughs> so listen, GLS is awesome. Um, if you're a parent, if you are a grandparent, if you're a retiree, if you're a student, if you're a young professional, mom, dad's in the room, doesn't matter. Uh, GLS is a great place for you to learn and to grow in your leadership capacity and ability. And if you're saying, well, Gabe, I'm not really a leader, you are a leader. And that is one of the coolest things about GLS and this conference is that they really emphasize no matter what role you play in your life, whether it be professionally or relationally, uh, you are a leader to some capacity to somebody in your life. And at bare minimum, you're a leader to 
towards yourself and how you lead your life. And so join up uh, with uh, GLS this year and join and be a part of that. You can register for that now. You can scan that QR code. Uh, but again, if you have any questions regarding that, any summer, summer nights, uh, BP Youth, you name it, all the different opportunities with young adults happening this summer. There's so many things that you can step into that we're excited about. So we hope you'll join and tap in. Even though it's summer and it's busy, there's some great opportunities for you to really step in this summer here with us at Bridgepoint Church. And so as always, uh, if you're looking to say, hey, Gabe, I wanna uh, invest with my tithe and offering here at this church. I'm, you're feeling led, you're feeling uh, impacted by what God is doing in your heart and you want to give of your tithes and offerings and how you can go about that. There's ways to do that on site and online. And so if you ever have questions about that, please don't hesitate to ask. But as always, friends, this is... This is that time where we really press in and we step deeper into relationship with God because it's the end of the service, which means we go back to life, we go back to our jobs, we go back to you name it, fill in the blank, and this is the opportunity we get to live out that mission of helping people, all people get closer to God. And so that's the funnel that we view our lives through. That's the funnel that we view the things that we do here at this church through, and we hope you'll partner with us in joining us in that journey. But friends, as always, we love you guys. We'll see you next Sunday. Go in peace. Peace.